Om Gyana Tinilan Hasya Gyanam Janashalaka Yatchak Shulin Militam Yena Tasma Shri Guru Ven Nama Shreshtam Manapi Shakti Putra Sulupam Rupam Tazyago Jamhurim Kurim Maturim Goshtim Radha Kundam Giri Puram Ho Radha Madhava Shamtato Yasya Pratita Kripa Yashri Guru Mitam Nathusri Bande Ham Shri Guru Shri Atas Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shuntam Sag Kujatam Sahagana Rakhunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sadvaitam Vrajana Sahitam Krishna Tetanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakaram Vitam Shakaram Shantakaram Pujagasayanam Padmanabham Suresham Vishvadharam Gagana Sadrisham Medavarnam Shubhangam Lakshmi Kantam Kamalanayanam Yogi Nanayam Yam Bande Vishnam Bhavabhayaharam Sarvalokaikanatam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I have to Uh, in my travels, uh, starting, well, been started many years ago, but recently in my travels, I've been speaking on Sri Vishnu Sahasranama as Rik Mahabharat spoken by Bhishma, grandfather Bhishma, to Yudhishthira Maharaj. So this is a, a, a way to meditate. This has gone off goes like that. Okay. This is a way to uh, meditate on the qualities of Vishnu, who is Krishna, but particularly uh, how he interacts with the material world which we are stuck in, and how he helps us to get out and his various avatars in this material world. So, uh, I'll continue with that. Now, on name 151, which also uh, occurred earlier already, um, several of the names in Vishnu Sahasranam they appear more than once. Uh, so this name is Vishva Yoni. Vishva means the universe, and Yoni means the womb. <coughs> so that's generally uh, translated as the cause of the universe. Although uh, all of these names can have multiples. Sri Madhvacharya stated that. Uh, Every, every name in Vishnu Sahasranam can, can have a thousand meanings, but there are some primary meanings. Uh, he is the cause of the universe. That, that was already discussed in, by the commentators in the previous uh, entry for Vishnu. Uh, and in this time, they, they put it around the other way, that the universe is his womb in as much as he is born in this world. Although he has uh, intrinsically nothing to do with this world. He's aloof from transcendental to. Uh, he is born in this world. He is the cause of all causes, but it is as if the world has caused him in as much as the situation of the world, of the jivas forgetting him, out of his compassion for them. He feels himself obliged to enter this world to uplift the devotees, especially to uplift the devotees, Pradhyaranak, um, and to uh, quell the disturbances caused by the non-devotees toward his devotees. Uh, so he appears in this world, and he appears to com- largely he appears to comply with this world, largely he appears as if he is taking shelter of this world, he lies down on the earth, he takes food which is produced from this world, so it appears as if he, just like a child is within the womb uh, and is, takes all things from the womb of the mother, so he also takes shelter, particularly of Bhumi Mata, who is his wife also, uh, so, uh, yeah, he is within this universe, although he is intrinsically beyond it. Uh, the next name, 152, Punaravastuhu. 
which means uh, who again and again resides. Vasu gives the uh, idea of residing or existing. So uh, he end, the, the idea is that he again enters the universe and he again and again enters the hearts of uh, the jivas who have forgotten him. That is his great kindness. His kindness is mentioned in, uh, in previous names that's alluded to. Sahishnu was one name just, just came. He's very tolerant. Even though the jivas are forgetting him, he's very tolerant of the of them and goes with them life after life to try to help them. So he makes this elaborate arrangement of the whole material world to facilitate the perverse desires of the jivas, but he again and again uh, enters as the, the antaratma or the paramatma, the super soul of all his creations and all the living beings within the creations. And in this way, uh, he maintains and always, in, out of his mercy, always endeavors to uplift uh, his devotees. So, uh, also important to understand is that he is within the heart of even the great demigods who uh, are not independent gods. They're also, even though they appear to be very powerful, and this can be said of of any powerful person in the world. All their power uh, comes from Krishna. Their very life comes from Krishna. He is, uh, because he is with them, they have life, intelligence, uh, power, and all this, uh, as we find in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, this Tejas, Tejas, Vinamaham, Buddhi, Buddhi, Mahatam, Asmi, all these statements of Krishna. He is the the uh, vitality of people. He is Paurush Angrishu. He is the ability or the manliness in man. So whatever ab abilities we may have, we should know that's only because Krishna very kindly uh, resides with us and uh, gives us whatever we have. Another meaning uh, of Punaravasu is that again and again he, he creates a residence. So in this way, he again and again uh, recreates the world after massive dev the, the complete devastation when even uh, Brahma dies and all the universes are withdrawn into the body of Vishnu. So again and again, uh, they come out. And in this way, by uh, Krishna's creation. Yes, he's also creating the residence for the jivas and he's, uh, that function of organizing all the ingredients in the universe is done by Brahma, who is empowered by Krishna to do so. So, uh, the next uh, name is of one of the uh, very famous avatars of Vishnu, name 153, is Upendra and name 154. Upendra is a very well-known name, and num number 154 is Brahmana, which is an even better known name of the uh, Lord who has appeared as a transcendental dwarf within this world. Who could imagine that the supremely mighty, powerful Lord who has been glorified in all these names for his mighty feats uh, is all is a dwarf. Of course, another name for this dwarf is Trivikram, which means that he takes three mighty steps. So he's not as uh, insignificant or incapable as he might look. So Upindra, the uh, generally understood meaning of that, is that he is the younger brother of Indra. He appeared. Uh, due to Aditi's pleas, we all know the panel of Brahmana Dev, and uh, I've, I've spoken on this extensively, so I won't speak on this now. Although Brahmana Radishi is upcoming, we're all getting excited about Radhashtami coming up, but uh, shortly after that is also Brahmana Radishi. And I've had the great good fortune to 
uh, many times visit the place where Vamanadeva appeared in this world, or at least the, the representation of that place on this earth, on the bank of the Narmada, we find in Bhagavatam that the place where Bharat was performing sacrifices of, of, uh, under the direction of Shukracharya is called Prigukach. So that is, uh, nowadays, that town is known as Paruj in Gujarat. So I'm, I've had the good fortune to visit that place several times, and uh, we have regular preaching going on there. Uh, Upendra, the younger brother of Indra. So he, the younger brother is supposed to serve the elder brother, and certainly Upendra does. Uh, generally it's thought that the elder brother will be the, uh, the most powerful, uh, as of course Ram was in relation to his brothers. For instance, Balaram is at least some people think that uh, it appears to be more powerful than Krishna, although Srila Prabhupada said that actually Krishna is more powerful than Balaram because Balaram has to rest on Krishna. But in this case, clearly, uh, Upendra is more powerful than Indra. Uh, even though he appeared as a charming little boy, he very soon uh, ex expanded his form to cover the whole universe, which gives us uh, another meaning of the name Upendra. Upa means, it's a prefix which has several meanings. Uh, in this instance, it means one who means following or coming after. So Upendra means the younger brother of Indra. Uh, but another meaning is Upuri, above. So he's also superior to Indra, even though he comes after Indra, uh, he is superior. In, in terms of the worldly situation, Indra is superior to Vamanade. Just like in terms of the worldly situation, etiquette, Balaram is superior to Krishna, Yudhishthira is superior to Krishna. But intrinsically, uh, Vishnu is superior to everyone. So he is Param Purush, the Supreme Person, so that includes everyone else. So why say, that, why make the particular point that he's superior to Indra? Well, as this point should be understood because generally when we see a great person in this world, we think, oh, how great they are. We may be dazzled into thinking that they are the greatest person that can exist. And certainly Indra is very powerful. We can't imagine his power as he, with his uh, thunderbolt, he breaks mountains and kills demons. And uh, from our perspective, it might seem, from the worldly perspective, it might seem that there's no one more powerful than Indra because although Brahma and Shiva are far superior to Indra, uh, they generally don't, move about in the world much. They're, they're more reserved. Whereas Indra, he's the king. Indra means king. So he's uh, actively involved in overseeing all the demigods. And uh, the king has to be active. Sleeping king is bad news for the citizens. So he appears to be most powerful. So that is emphasized that, that Krishna, he is much superior to Indra, even though Indra appears superior to Krishna. Uh, even Indra himself is overcome by that illusion, which he very kindly smashes in a very polite way, you can say, not by challenging Indra, but by just thwarting Indra's attempts to uh, drown, his actually offensive attempt to drown the inhabitants of Vrindavan. That's recalled in the nature of devotion that that Krishna thinks that so when Indra sent the Sangvataka clouds to attack Vrindavan, Krishna thought to kill Indra. But then he thought, why should I bother? Indra is so insignificant. Why, sh why should I bother killing him? You know, it's, it's, 
So although Indra thinks himself so significant, his significance is very little compared to Krishna. So all these names, they help us to uh, see everything in the actual perspective that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead and we are all his eternal servants, even the great demigods, young Brahma, Rudra, Marita, young Brahma, Varanindra, Rudra, Marita, Stundanti, Vyaisjavai, all the great demigods, Brahma, Shiva, the wind gods, Indra, all offer prayers to this person, to Krishna. So this uh, is very pleasing for devotees to hear and gives us impetus to surrender to him knowing that he is the uh, proper person to surrender to his way, who is capable of giving us full shelter. Whereas the demigods, uh, they cannot, because they themselves are subject to the conditions of the material world. Number 154 is Vamana, which literally means uh, a dwarf. So this is... Uh, I, I personally find this Vamana Leela among all the avatars, of course, Krishna is too Bhagavan, so I am Krishna is the source of all avatars. So uh, there is the, the most charming of all forms. Of course, Rama is very charming with his pastimes, but this pastime of Vamana, how he uh, in jest cheats his devotee Bali Maharaj and and Having taken everything Bali Maharaj, he gives himself to Bali Maharaj. There's one statement in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita that, uh, what is that? I'm just forgetting that now. Krishna Shobha Bhakti Naloy Aparad Alpo Sheva Bahumane Atta Prajanta Prasara. That Krishna's nature is not to accept the offenses of his devotees. He doesn't see any offense. But if there's a little service by the devotee, he considers it to be very great and in return gives him very, his very self to that devotee. So Bali Maharaj was uh, an offender. In as much as he upset the universal order and uh, he threw Indra out of the heavenly planets and so Krishna has to come Ete Chang Shankalat and such Krishna stood Bhagavan Sram Indrari Vyakalam No Kam Vidhi Yanti Yuge Yuge Krishna comes Krishna the original Supreme Personality of Godhead comes in every age specifically to uh, relieve the distress of the demigods headed by Indra who become disturbed by the demons so uh, Bali, in the universal sense, was an offender. He was a criminal, in one sense. Although, in another, if a king can, oh, of course, in Vedic culture, if one king can overpower another, then the kingdom is his. He, he can take over someone else's kingdom. That's considered legitimate, generally. So uh, Bali, he may have been an offender, but. Krishna, if there is any trace of offense, someone might say there's an offense. Of course, we shouldn't say there's any offense. But even if there's any trace of offense, Krishna doesn't see that, and he sees the attitude of service. Even Bali, uh, uh, he, would, he gave the universe. It wasn't a little service. Although for Krishna, a universe is just a mustard seed. But uh, it's we know ourselves when we're going for collection and donations. People are reluctant even to give a penny what to speak of all their possessions. So Bali Maharaj gave that. He was tricked into doing it. Uh, he was willing to give whatever Vamana wanted. Uh, he, he, he gave all that he had to, to Vamana. And ultimately, uh, for the third step of Vamana, he, so he, he, he put his head. Now you put your put on my head. He gave himself to Krishna and reciprocally Krishna gave him Vamana, gave himself to Bali Maharaj. So this is a very uh, sweet pastime. Another meaning of uh, 
Vamana be understood in this way. Vamiyati Tyajiati Madam Balan. So uh Vama in Bengali say Bomi. That means to vomit. So uh this literally means who made Bali Maharaj vomit his pride. Is the name is extrapolated in this way. So uh, pride is a total disqualification in bhakti. So if there is any pride in Bali Maharaj that now I am in such a position, it uh, would be very difficult for anyone not to be proud, having uh, defeated Indra and taken over the heavenly planets and living in total uh, opulence. So it's very difficult not to be proud of one's strength and opulence and fame, but Vamana Dei took it all away from Bali and, and arrested him, humiliated him, and in this way very kindly took away the pride of Bali Maharaj and uh, in this but in this way made him qualified to receive Vamana, to have Vamana as his own property because uh, one who has any pride cannot have Krishna they have to choose another meaning or, or the uh, Vamana means short but uh, another meaning can be added to that that he's not only short but very charming very beautiful all the forms of the Lord they're all very beautiful even the hog form and the form which we may think are not very beautiful but uh Actually, if we see those paintings of the Dash Avatar by B. N. Sharma, he's empowered by Krishna, no doubt, to uh, exhibit in painting form the beauty of the various forms. How can a hog be beautiful? It cannot. But this pig, Varaha Dev, is exquisitely beautiful. So, uh, all the forms of Vishnu are very beautiful, but some are particularly noted for their beauty. Balaram is particularly noted for his beauty. Mohini Murti is particularly noted. And Bhamana also. Very, very beautiful and charming form. So, uh, another meaning, uh, Vatu means Brahmachari, student in the Guru Kul. So, Bhamo, Vatu, Bham, Asya Asya Divamana. Well, he's, this little boy, he's not just a little boy. Another quality of him is that he's a, a Guru Kult student. So he was just like that. We'll see that uh, in the, his form, the way he's dressed, he's just like a very nice Brahmachari. Hare Krishna. Uh, that's described in Srimad Bhagavatam uh, that Yajamana, that refers to Bali Maharaj, is the Yajamana or the person who had requested the sacrifice on whose behalf it was being performed. Yajamana Pramudito Darshaniyam Manoramam Rupana Rupa Vayavam Tasma Asanam Ahara. The, the Yajami Maharaj, he saw, he's, he's very pleased to see the beautiful form, very uh, darshaniya, well worth looking at, or something that one very much desires to look at, because manorama, it, it, it's very pleasing to the mind. So this describes uh, Vamanadi, darshaniya, manorama, very, very uh, pleasing to the mind and, and darshaniya, well worth seeing or seeable, not just visible, but something that one would naturally want to see them. The eyes will naturally be drawn toward that form, that beautiful Vamana form. So the Yajamana, the uh, Bali Maharaj, very, very pleased to see this form. And he offered uh, 
a, a saint in that assembly with his heart completely captivated by this form of Vamana, the, he offered Vamana a seat. Uh, another meaning of Vamana, Sarvani Vamani Nayati Iti Vamana, one who bestows all the desires of the devotees, or who produces joy in, by, in those who see him. So these are some of the meanings of uh, Vamana. And there's another very uh, interesting meaning, or astonishing meaning, which uh, comes up in name 155. Well, I can, but I can take questions now. How about that? Ramanan Prabhu? Questions, comments, discussion? Hare Krishna? We all there? Hare Bo, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh-huh. Well, where it was to hear me, okay. Am I unmuted? Yes. You are unmuted. I'm sorry. It's hard for me to unmute myself. But I have unmuted everybody. We actually have 23 people on all the different platforms. But please, anybody that would like to add anything, go ahead. Maharaj, I'll ask a question. You had mentioned in um, the, ki- the kindness that, that Vamanadev was showing to King Bali. You mentioned that he did not did not see or in any way accept the fences, but yet um, I'm sorry. Could, could you explain that, that please? Very, hmm? Oh, okay. Um, you had mentioned that that Vamana did not accept in any way any offenses that may have been there by King Bali, but yet we have to be yeah, so yeah. careful. To, to avoid offenses, so um, there seems to be yeah. some contradiction there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Could you sp- yeah. We shouldn't take this. We should. The fact that Krishna is very tolerant, we shouldn't take advantage of that. We should simply avoid offenses. But actually, the, the, what's the the es- Just like the essence of worship of Krishna is the desire to please him. And the essence of Aparada is the uh, is a, the desire to displease him or simply being neglectful. Uh, of, of, that means our desire to please him is not really there. Even if we're neglectful, that can be an offense. And what to speak if we're directly malicious toward Krishna. So what I understand from this, if a devotee deliberately makes a mistake, uh, not deliberately, sorry, if a devotee, because a devotee doesn't deliberately uh, make mistakes in, in worship, but if in the course of one's devotional service, one deliberately neglects to do something which should be done, or one is uh, has a... Uh, an in, a, a, a improper attitude, just like I heard it. Actually, I don't want to repeat it. I heard the devotee say such a thing. I don't. I shouldn't repeat it. So they may say something which is directly offensive, and the devotee doesn't do that. But if by mistake, for instance, um, there's some oversight or forgets to do something, just like uh, sometimes it happens in the in the, uh, you may be singing, leading a kirtan, the, for instance, Gurvashtaka in the Mongolati, and you, you leave out a verse. So that's a mistake. That's, that could be said. To, it's aparad, means it's not properly done, but because the intention is not to offend Krishna, but one has made, yeah, it's, a, it's an involuntarily or uh, unknown mistake. So Krishna overlooks that. Uh, so that's my understanding of this. But if we think, oh, I want too much, too much to sing all this and I just forget it, and 
then that becomes offensive. So it's, it's very much in the attitude. That's my understanding. Anyone else want to discuss that some more? I guess, well, maybe there's the point that um, that Krishna is is so kind and merciful that Krishna may not accept their offenses, but but the big problem, uh, maybe we'll discuss this as, as Radhasami is coming up, that Radharani, yeah. <laughs> that she will accept. And, and therefore, well, we, because all, we generally all the she's more compassionate. Radharani is more compassionate. I, I often, when, when we see devotees have gone into ideas and they don't really serve them very much, and they, they say that, well, you know, Gornitai are very merciful. And uh, my response to that is, that, well, that's true, but the devotees of Gornitai may not allow you to uh, get anywhere near them. The devotees of Gornitai don't to neglect them. If you have deities, you should serve them well and properly. So this, I- this idea that the Lord is very merciful, so we don't need to bother to serve him properly, that is an offensive attitude. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the point. Same point you made. There are circumstances, uh, Dandavats Maharaj, Vidagda Madhavadas here from Hawaii. Uh, Sorry, who? Vidagda Madhavadas. We met in Sashmadiya. Right. right, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and Madhavadas. <laughs> there are circumstances in every situation, including offenses. So that that makes you know each situation unique. And Krishna, being independent, he can choose you know according to the circumstances, and he knows the heart of everyone. He can decide what he will accept and what he won't. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a, I will tell you, Krishna is the arbiter. Right. We, there may be so many rules written, but ultimately it's up to Krishna. Krishna is not bound by any rules. One, one part of that pastime that I that struck me once when I was reading it was that uh, when Bali, you know, he had re- uh, rejected his spiritual master, Sukracharya, because Sukracharya was trying to get him to break his vow to, or f- to tell a lie or somehow get out of it, giving Vamana Dev those three steps. But after Vamana Dev took the second step, and, and told Bali Marsh, I've just taken everything. So now what? We got another step. And I heard that um, his wife came to Bali and whispered in his ear or told him, uh, you know, instead of, oh, that's great, you just lost everything. What about us and the kids? You know? Uh, she comes and she That's tells him. <laughs> she tells him, "You still well, have your body. You can offer your head. It is feet." That's, That's there in Bhagavatam that Shukra said that to uh, to Bali before he gives away everything. That uh, Sarva Svang Vishnave Datva Mudho Bhati Asi Katham. Shukra says that if you 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 fool if you give everything to Vishnu then how will you maintain yourself and Prabhupada right. comments that that Shukra is thinking he's thinking how will I maintain my because Shukra is depending on Bali so that may be also that the, the wife also. what's her name Vinya Bali the wife of uh, no, the wife of Bali Maharaj. So, she, but she, we find that in the in the Bhagavatam, it's described. It may be described a little differently in the different Puranas. 
that uh, Brahma came and he was about to say something, but the wife of Dali, she, she was just all so flustered that she interrupted Brahma. And Brahma came and she just interrupted him. And uh, she said that, that my, my, I, don't, I should have opened it on this Leela in the Veda base, but she said that, that you see, my, someone's a fool if they think they own everything. So she was, she was supporting the position of, of Vishnu, actually. She was elevated. She, she's not a, uh, uh, you know, she wasn't a gross materialist. She was a little elevated. Yeah, his wife is Bali Maharaj. Yeah, here we are. It's I've got it in Javan. Uh This is from the Eighth Canto, Chapter Two, two Beginning, Text Nineteen. Translation: Dali Maharaj is chaste wife, afraid and aggrieved at seeing her, her husband arrested. Immediately offered obeisances to Lord Vamanadi, who pinned her. She folded her hands and spoke as follows: Purport. She proffered purport. Although Lord Brahma was speaking, he had to stop for a while. She interrupted him. Because Bali Maharaj's wife, Vindyahavali, who was very agile and afraid, wanted to say something. So she says, Shimati Vindyahavali said, O oh my Lord, you have created the entire universe for the enjoyment of your personal pastimes, but foolish, unintelligent men have claimed proprietorship for material enjoyment, referring to her husband. Certainly they are shameless agnost- agnostics. Falsely falsely claim citizenship, they think that they can give charity and enjoy. In such a condition, what good can they do for you while the in- independent creator, maintainer, and annihilator of this universe? Skipping the purport. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's quite a long purport. So it may be in some other Purana that she, she said that she told Bali Maharaj to put her, uh, or in one of the commentaries of the Acharyas that she told the Ali to give up in his head. Do you see, you don't see it in Bhagavatam. Uh, uh, that uh, the part where he, it may have been suggested that he do that? I'm just, just looking through this now, but I don't believe that's there in the Bhagavatam. Okay, go ahead. I'll, I'll look for it too. Yeah, okay. Or maybe that's... Oh, I think maybe that's after he gave his head. Yeah, it seems like then the Avali I spoke after. Yeah, okay. All right, then, anything else? Hare Krishna. Anything else for those? We have quite a few devotees here. Uh, Hanuman for Shank Swami was actually here for most of the class. He must have just had time to leave. Anyone else have a question about all these wonderful names of Lord Vishnu or a question for Maharaj? Well, this is Dasarath here in Arizona. Maharaj, you... Hare Krishna, you have a thousand names of Lord Vishnu. You plan to go through every one. Well, now I've been through 154, so Krishna willing, I can go through the remaining 846. <laughs> it's not actually exactly 1,000. It's a bit less, just like the, just like there are many temples in South India where they have halls of a thousand pillars, but they're usually a thousand. It's usually a bit less. It's, I believe it's 920 names. Anyway, you please bless me. And, and it's a standard thing to, I mean, it's a fairly common thing in South India especially. I guess it used to be in North India also for, for pundits to comment on the thousand names. Of course, not all in one sitting by any means, but in the course of several months usually. Also, it's interesting about, 
Also, a question about uh, where is your base, Maharaj? Where do you do you have a base, or are you only traveling? Any one place, but I'm I spend most of the year in India, and uh, between Gujarat and South India, and in South India, mostly in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. I'm not really based anywhere, just moving around. It was a little curious, Maharaj. You mentioned that uh, some of the names. The thousand names were repeated. Now, Krishna being a yeah. with, it, it, you with know, inconceivable, unlimited uh, expansions that, that are ever-increasing, um, it's a little mm-hmm. curious that, that some are repeated. Why might that have been? Well, uh, one, of the com- one of the commentators, which is the main commentator I'm drawing from, that's... Uh, per- uh, Parashara Bhatta, the Sri Vaishnav Sampradaya, his commentary was made a few hundred years ago. He uh, links all the names, not just the ones that are repeated, but he sees that they're, they're, the names which are contiguous with each other, they all relate to each other. Just like uh, this morning in, the, in Dallas here, I'm in mean Dallas. Uh, I spoke on Vijaya, victory, and Jeta, which means the conqueror. And the name before that is Anagha, which means sinless. So how we can relate that, although he conquers over others, he doesn't do so in a, in a manner that is uh, causing distress or that is sinful. Everything he does is sinless. So like that, he... Uh, he relates the names uh, all. It, it, if there's a name which comes more than once, then you can see how that name is appearing in relation to other names which are just close to it. Just like the next name is Prangshtu, which means very tall. So that is uh, that is stated in relation to Vamana when he does become very tall. So like that. It's an ocean of bliss. There's so much, so, so beautiful prayers. It's uh, Vedanta Deshika. He made a thousand prayers, a thousand verses, glorifying the shoes of Lord Vishnu. So we have lots of, just for, we have so much, we have so much nectar. So much nectar. Prabhupada has introduced us to this great culture. Marsh is the uh, Vishnu Sahasranam from the Mahabharata. There's, there are several. The most uh, famous one, or recited one, is from Mahabharata. Yes. Uh, there's also, I believe, maybe one Purana, maybe Brahmanda Purana, like that. That's Bhishma When Yudhishthira asked him what, uh, asked Bhishma, what is the best. Uh, the best means of attaining uh, all desirable goals, then uh, Bhishma answered by chanting the names of Vishnu, and he, he chanted these names himself. He taught them to you. And he ended, uh, uh, he ended it all, or uh, it's recited at the end of Vishnu Sahasranam that, uh, that's recited that one verse, it's still there, there are some Brahmins especially, especially in South India, who regularly recite Vishnu Sahasrana, even daily. So that name is recited, that verse is recited in the, uh, at the end, what is that? Uh, Rama, Rama, Eti, Rama, Eti, Rame, Rama, Mano, Rame, Sahasrana, Matulia. This, uh, Rama, Nama, Varana, this is a verse spoken by Lord Shiva to his wife, who says that, uh, Rama, I'm, I'm always chanting the name Rama, uh, is very easing to the mind, and uh, chanting this name, Rama, is equivalent to chanting the whole uh, 1,000 names of Vishnu. So you may say, then why, why chant the names of Vishnu? Why? Because that also helps us to understand more about who he is, what are his qualities, what are his pastimes, 
it's a great meditation on his uh, forms, names, qualities, pastimes, and um, although we're very tiny little living beings, but by his mercy, the mercy of his devotees, we can uh, understand more of him and be attracted more and more to him. Krishna is all attractive, that's the meaning of his name. What is it about him that makes him attractive? And there's, there's unlimited features and facets of his personality that are attractive, and many of them are covered in Vishnu Sahasranama. That's my understanding. I, I have a question that's kind of off the subject. Uh, what does your name mean, Bhakti Vikash? Vikasha, well, it can, if it's spelled with sh in the, in the name, that means like prakasha, which means uh, effulgence, light, manifestation, or vikasa, which, that means expansion or development. Well, thank you, Maharaj, for your association. Thank you so I, much to all of you. I asked something. Maharaj, if somebody wants to hear your lectures for the other names of Vishnu, what's your website where they can hear those lectures? Uh, well, right now they're being broadcast for the next few days from Dallas, but that's a bit of, you know, you'd have to get up in the middle of the night to hear those. Uh, I have a website, com. Then they, they're posted a, a bit after they... They're recorded and then posted again a little later. After the, they, they're not broad, they're not always broadcast live, but they come up. Some should be up there already. Did you see? Some should be up there already. But I, I generally do one or two names. No, usually two or three in one session. Sometimes more. Sometimes one or sometimes the best of them in one session. So if if I've done now I've done now I've through 154 names so there'll probably be about 50 lectures on this. So if you have a lot of patience and you like to hear all these things, I, I I you can listen. I personally find it a very great meditation. I have to prepare these lectures in advance. It's not the kind of thing you can ad lib through. You have to prepare. So then I have to look up different things. And it's a, a very absorbing meditation on the quality of that person who we totally belong to and we totally want to give ourselves to because that's what we're supposed to do and that's the source of all welfare and happiness for us and for him. We want him to be happy with us by our giving ourselves to him, although we belong to him. So it's a, it's a very sweet meditation. So we'll May I ask the last question? Ah, yes, please. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, um, this is Dr. Luciano. Um, I was wondering, Bhishma gave this a thousand names of Vishnu on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Um, why, did, why would not Bhishma just say, ask Krishna, because Krishna was present there? Oh, why would why have Krishna, Krishna was personally present there while, while he was reciting these names and Krishna was standing right in front of him. This is the time after the battle when Bhishma Dev was lying on the bed of arrows like a hedgehog. So yes, Krishna could have said, no doubt, uh, but that was... Uh, Krishna gave that's described in Bhagavatam in the Prabhupada's commentary that Krishna even he had attempted to console Yudhishthira in Yudhishthira's grief at uh, having been the cause of the Kurukshetra battle or perceiving himself as the cause. So Krishna he wants to give the credit to his devotee and make his devotee seem more capable than himself. Just like I remember one time, in, in, uh, I was addressing a group of lawyers in India, and one at the end, of, uh, one 
one of the lawyers asked me that how come uh, Hanuman jumped over the sea to Lanka and Ram had to build a bridge and the way he it was like he had he's got me chafing he says you know he's got, he's thought he'd really got me there but I said that well Ram very kindly wants to give credit to his devotees and show them as greater than him <laughs> so a look of uh, <laughs> enlightenment came on face. Krishna makes his devotees look bigger than him, greater than him. Ah, just like he learned all Vedic knowledge from Sandipani Muni, as if he didn't know. So the, the knowledge that Bish, everything Bhishma spoke, it's all coming from Krishna. But Krishna made Bhishma the channel by which that knowledge can be uh, broadcast to the world. And although Krishna speaks Bhagavad Gita in glorification of himself, there are many, many more narrations by his devotees about Krishna, which is suitable. Because it's suitable that he glorify Krishna. He can also glorify himself. But Bhishma, by reciting Vishnu Sahasranam, taught that we should all do that. All the devotees, they should recite the names of Krishna and meditate on his qualities. So that's my answer to that. If anyone else has any other insights, we could offer them. Thank you, Makaraj. So then we'll finish, huh?